beloved. Welcome to the day of the rest of your life. Welcome to the first day of the best of your life. I am Astarius Miraculi, and today I bring you the message, Power of the Word. You know, words and thoughts are so amazingly important and powerful. And we sometimes don't pay enough attention to the power that we're setting into motion when we think certain thoughts and we speak certain words. So I want to break down some of this wisdom for us so that we would all move forward in expressing a greater measure of conscious power. For each and every one of us are very powerful creators. And the part that is sometimes a bit unfortunate is that we create by default, default or we create unconsciously. So a word is the body of living thought. A word is the means by which a thought comes into incarnation. For thoughts are intangible. And words act as a bridge between the non-physical, that which is intangible, and the physical, that which is tangible. And so a word plays an amazing part in bringing about the crystallization of things that hold importance for us. A bridge between the inner and the outer realms. A word is the first stage of manifestation. Because a word is that which we can audibly hear, and our audible hearing is of the resonance of the physical plane. So we want to be really mindful of the words that we speak and the thoughts that we think. Every thought word is a thrust of creation. Whenever we are thinking, we're in the process of creating something. Whenever we speak a word, we're in the process of creating something. So what are you creating, beloved? Are you creating consciously and by virtue of intention, on purpose? Or are you creating unconsciously and possibly creating something that would be an enemy unto you, working against you? Every word is an affirmation. Every thought is an affirmation. Thoughts and feelings create all forms, and blessings thrive before they are born. Anything that will come into manifestation, which is its second stage of reality, and even the lesser measure of reality, was a reality prior to its manifestation, because everything exists as a seed in the womb of creation in the vortex womb of creation. And so when we create something, whenever you have a desire, then that desire that you have is in alignment with the God self that you are. It's like you, the, the desire becomes you. It is fashioned out of the fabric of your own being, just like the Creator created all of us and the entire universe out of the fabric of the Creator's own self. As above, so below. When we create, we create out of the fabric of our own being. Our desire becomes an extension of our own beingness until it eventually portals into manifestation. We create out of the fabric of our own being. And so whatever blessing finds its way into manifestation, it's not something that just 
suddenly comes to be when it becomes manifest. It simply enters into the second stage of its reality. Because the first stage exists within the womb of our mind, within the womb of our soul, as it is fashioned out of the fabric of our own being. We create from the essence of our own self. Thoughts and feelings create all forms. And blessings thrive before they are born. So our lesson is one of learning to be in the appreciation of the blessedness of life even before it comes into manifestation. Like the first stage of creation is a realm wherein human eyes do not see. It's invisible to the physical realm. It's the non-physical realm. It's the realm of spirit. The realm of spirit is the first stage of reality and even the greater measure of reality. It is the realm wherein the greater measure of the work is already done. But we must learn to have appreciation for it. You know, what is the wisdom in appreciating an effect without appreciating the cause that gave birth to that effect? So you are pregnant with every blessing that will ever come to be. They are embryos within your soul, even though your human eyes have yet to see. You are a powerful creator. We are all powerful creators. And it's time for us to create consciously. Feeling is the greater measure of having. Even before something comes into manifestation that we want to have, it is the feeling frequency of that something that matters even more. Even after the manifestation comes, if you don't have a joyous and grand feeling in response to that manifestation, then that manifestation is worthless. Feeling is the greater measure of having. And feeling is the impetus that creates the manifestation of the having. When we set words into motion and thoughts into motion, we activate the law of attraction. The nature of the words that we put forth determine that which we're going to attract into our own experience. Every moment is eternity in a bottle. Drink up. But what are we infusing into the moments that we are experiencing? When we set forth a, a word, word is sent forth on the wings of breath. You cannot speak without breathing. And so when we set forth a word, we are breathing life into being. We are breathing something into being. Breath is the breast milk of source. And when we breathe upon something via speaking the word, we are breastfeeding something. We are nourishing something with our vital life energy. What are you giving empowerment to? What are we giving empowerment to? When you desire something, that desire becomes the reality of your own being and moves in the direction of manifestation. Every thought is the thrust of creation. Every word is the thrust of creation. And emotion is that which gives power to our thoughts, gives power to our words. A word and a thought has very little power unless it is sent forth with a tremendous amount of emotional energy. That is energy in motion. And the lifespan of a thought is determined by the measure of emotional energy that that thought is propelled with. When we have deep and powerful feelings about something, then that thought has a tremendous amount of power. It moves through the ethers, it moves through the universe, 
and it magnetically begins to attract other thoughts of a like nature. And it formulates a thought army. Until eventually the energy has become so accelerated that it morphs. It morphs into manifestation. It morphs into the crystallization of something. And the positive things of life that represent the qualities of the Most High are of the resonance of eternity. As all of the negatives of life are of the resonance of time and therefore have an expiration date. Every negative thing has an expiration date. And every negative thing, you know, hate, worry, fear, you know, all the negatives are always the periphery of life, always the circumference, cannot be the center because life, light, life, love, God, benevolence owns the center of everything. And so we also want to move beyond the tendency to judge. The Holy Scripture says, judge not that ye be not judged, for the judgment that you judge with is the judgment that you will be judged by. So sometimes we use words that is a negative judgment upon ourselves. You know, have you ever used the language, I can't, I just can't get it right. That's never true. And it's important that we know that human facts don't always line up with the truth. Because it is not true that you can't do anything. You are capable of doing any and everything, even if you're not believing that in the forefront of your human mind. Rather than saying, I just can't get it right. Maybe you want to say, I really look forward to getting it right. I really look forward to learning how to make this thing a reality for me. You know, if you sometimes, let's say, use the um, the languaging that I have to do this or you should do that. There's a danger in the have to and the should because there's a dishonoring of free will. Have to does not honor the fact that we have free will. Should does not honor the fact that we have free will. Like you might have a thought that says, I should go and visit my family during the holidays. But if there's a part of you that hates to do that, then going to visit them becomes a unsacred yes. And sometimes it's way more empowering to say a sacred no than an unsacred yes. Step away from the have to. Ever heard someone say, oh, he will never amount to anything. The same judgment that you judge with is what you will be judged by. If you say about another being, they will never mount, amount to anything. It's like saying the universe will never amount to anything. It's like saying that you will never amount to anything. I mean, can you in truth say that the ocean is wet, but this wave over here is not? Or the ocean is wet, but this wave is dry? If the ocean is wet, the wave is wet. Or someone would like to say, oh, I hate that wave over there, but I love the ocean. No, if you hate the wave, you hate the ocean. You cannot separate. And so, you know, you don't want to come from that place of hate. Hate is a resonance of time anyway. It has an expiration date. Love is a resonance of eternity, extending from the beginningless beginning all the way into the endless end. Love is unfolding down the corridors of forever. Let go of the word, I'll try. No, you don't try, you just do it. Trying is lying. To do is true. If I tried to get up out of my seat, could I get further than this? The gesture in the direction of it, but never actually doing. Trying is lying. To do is true. Walk in your power. Walk in the manifestation of that which you are able to do. Have you ever heard someone say, ah, oh, they have way more money than they need. They have more money than they should have. If you judge the abundance that you witness another having, then you're blocking the flow of your own abundance. 
celebrate all of the abundance that exists within the whole of the universe. Because all abundance is your own abundance by extension. Why? Because you are a cellular counterpart within every abundant being. And therefore you are co-accumulator of all of the abundance that is, was, or ever will be. And as you align with that in consciousness, then the alignment in consciousness will create a soul jump start. And the next thing you know, you will feel or create the manifestation of that abundance in your own life. Ever heard the statement, I am not good enough? To say I am not good enough is to disempower the whole of the universe. Because that which you speak of yourself, you speak of the universe at large. The expansion of the universe is at the mercy of you feeling good about you. Ever heard someone say, oh, he or she is just so stupid. If you say that another being is stupid, by extension you are saying that your own self is stupid. That which you do unto the wave, you do unto the ocean. That which you do unto one part of life, you do unto all parts of life. Ever call someone an asshole? If you call another being an asshole, then you have also declared your own self as a portal of shit. So let us be mindful of the thoughts that we think. Have you ever heard someone say to another being, oh, you can't do that. Or you said to another being, you can't do that. If you say to another being, you can't do that, you're saying that the universe can't do that. And that your own self can't do that. Sometimes a parent will say, oh, my child is just not good at math. It would be far better to say, I really look forward to my child becoming better at math. We must learn to use languaging that becomes an affirmation of what we really want to bring into being and not use languaging that is a statement of our own debilitation and our own weakness. Thoughts and feelings create all forms and blessings thrive before they are born. And every wonderful thing that will ever happen for you exists as a seed in the womb of your soul, the vortex womb of creation. Is the seed less valuable than the blossoming flower? The blossoming flower is the effect. The seed is the cause. Effect cannot be greater than cause, even though effect may be more obvious than cause. Because we see, you know, in manifestation, you know, the obviousness of things. And yet, it is that which is inobvious that is the actual cause that has given birth to all of the manifested things that we can see in an obvious way. And so, beloved, walk in the power of who you are as a grand creator. Be really mindful of the thoughts that you think. Really mindful of the words that you speak and know that with every thought that you think and every word that you speak you are engaging in the thrust of creation you are affirming something every thought every feeling every word is a grand affirmation so I'm going to share with you now a little bit of uh, my didgeridoo to offer some sonic resonance to further bring about the crystallization of this empowerment that we're reaching for in using words and thoughts in a healthier way. I love you so much. Receive these sound currents as the empowerment of your own soul.
Oh, life is so delicious and wonderful. Thank you so much for receiving this empowerment. I am a starious miraculi. I love you so much. I champion you and I hold you in the light, in the affirmation of you being the grandest being that you can be. Please go to my website and experience some of my sound clips. Uh, have uh, a number of CDs and a uh, couple of books. Go partake of some of that. Please subscribe to my channel here and partake of my videos. And, and in case you didn't know, I got almost, uh, well, more than 160 of them. So there's a lot of wonderful frequency for you to work with. I am also a psychic astrologer. I do some amazing work. Uh, session work. I do it in person if you're in the Atlanta area here in the U.S. and I also work by phone and by Skype so I do work with people all over the world. I'd love to serve and empower you in that way and uh, also practice and teach Reiki. So uh, remember up at the top there's room for all. It's just the bottom that's crowded y'all. Aho Ashe Amen Namaste Hotep in Lakesh, Alak In, Shalom, Satnam, Hariom. I love you so much.